Data Warrior has been designed to help the drug discovery community visualize and analyze relationships between chemical structures and biological data. The software was developed by Actilion Pharmaceuticals and first released in June 2014. This example will guide you through a real medicinal chemistry analysis of the properties of chemokine CCR5 antagonists typified by the anti-HIV drug Maraviroc using a range of free tools. These include using PubMed and Kemble to assemble database using data from published results from four different research groups. There are also options for processing the data set with Excel or NIME and in the final part we will go on to use Data Warrior to visualize the relationship between three ligand deficiency metrics and molecular weight for each series. As we go through, I will highlight the choices made as the molecules were optimized towards drugs. Okay, let's start by loading some structure activity data into Data Warrior. We simply need to navigate to our file. And in this case, I'm going to use the CSV output from the spreadsheet where the data is simply written as smile strings. Done this to show you that Data Warrior automatically converts that information into chemical structures. Take a little time to explore the table window and you'll see that all the data is presented in a familiar spreadsheet format. If you want to get a better view of the whole panel, just click here on one of these small squares. So here you can see the structures in this column and all the associated data. If I click on one of the column headers, I can sort the data. So from lowest molecular weight to highest molecular weight and clicking once again reverses that. If I want to look at the information for any particular structure in more detail, I can use the structure window, select a compound and its data will appear in the bottom right hand panel here. If I wanted to filter the compounds by something like molecular weight, I can use these filters on in the top right hand panel. So for example, if I want to just look at the compounds which are below the Lipinski orally active threshold of 500. You can see that the number of compounds reduces from 87 to 13. And that information is given at the bottom of the screen. There are 87 compounds in this data set and applying the filter has reduced this down to 13. Okay, so let's calculate the ligand deficiency parameters for this set of compounds. To do this, Data Warrior requires information on the IC50s for each compound expressed as nanomolar. It assumes this, that this data is in, the, in this form, so if your data is in micromolar, you need to make a correction to the standard to the IC50 value. In this case, these are read out of Kemble, and Kemble refers to the IC50 as the standard value. To calculate these values and add the data to this table, we look under the chemistry, manual, chemistry menu and pick Add Compound Properties. If we select the LE and TOX tab from this panel, we can calculate these three values simply by ticking these three boxes here and selecting standard value from the drop down menus. This allows us to calculate three separate ligand efficiency parameters. We have the standard ligand efficiency, which is the relative free energy, free binding energy in kilocalories per mole for each non hydrogen atom as originally defined by Hopkins et al. Et al. And in this case, we're aiming for values of above 0.35. Here, 
Here we have the lipophilic ligand deficiency where we've corrected for loss of bioavailability as lipophilicity increases by subtracting the C log P value from the PIC50. And here we're aiming at above 3 for a lead compound and above 5 for a clinical candidate as suggested by Leeson and Springthorpe in their paper. And this final value is referred to as the ligand deficiency lipophilic price. It is a measure of the log P divided by the ligand deficiency and should move towards zero for improving potency. If we simply click on OK, we find that there are three extra columns added to our data table. Uh, they are all specifically labelled to tell you exactly which parameter you're looking at and how it was calculated. So here's the LE, here's the LLE, and here is the LELP. Let's plot the data on as a scatter plot plot. To do this, go to the 2D view window and right click anywhere on the screen. We're going to set the preferred chart type to a scatter plot. This puts all the data on the same plot and we want the molecular weight along the x-axis and the LLE on the y-axis. So here's all the data on a single plot. But we might want to know what each one of the data sets looks like in more detail. So let's colour each one of the data points by their originator. Right click on the plot and pick set marker colour. If we colour by originator, the points are all separated out and coloured in and given an individual colour. The key is at the bottom of the plot here, so AZ compounds are in dark blue, GSK compounds are in red, Merck compounds are in green, and Pfizer's are in yellow. So it becomes immediately apparent that the molecular weight of the Pfizer compounds is significantly lower than those of the others, with the AZ compounds being at the other extreme. We can split this composite plot into four separate plots to make it easier to see by picking split view by categories. If we choose originator from the first column, we get four separate scatter plots. And we can use this to analyze the compounds in more detail. For example, here is a compound from the AstraZeneca data set where the molecular weight was reduced substantially but this didn't result in any gain in LLE. If we click on any, any one particular point we can see the structure of this particular compound in the bottom right hand panel. Three D plots work in the same way. So if we take a look at the 3D view, we can choose what we want to assign on the axis. So let's plot the molecular weight on the x-axis, LLE on the y, and standard ligand deficiency on the z-axis. And this gives us a different view of our data. And we can turn the data around in three dimensions by using the right mouse. It's entirely up to you as to whether you find it easier to view the dimension the data in two or three dimensions. You may have noticed that the drug Maraviroc is not present in this data set. This is because the article abstracted by Kemble includes an IC90 value for this compound rather than the IC50s given for the rest of the compounds. 
but the data is available from other sources. So in this case, we need a method of adding data to the data warrior table. The precise details of how you do this are given in the PDF version of the tutorial. And for the sake of speed, we will just change this data set so that we are now looking at the file labelled CCR Bioactivity 2. which is exactly the same as the first file, but with the addition of Maravarok. If we scroll to the bottom of the data table, you can see it's been added to the bottom of the table. And in this case, it's been given Maravarok. It's been given the label Maravarok in the originator field. This will come in useful when we go to plotting the scatter graph. But the first thing we need to do to this is recalculate the values for the ligand deficiency parameters. So let's go back to add compound properties, tick on the ligand deficiency in tox. These are in fact all ready ticked from the previous session. So all we need to do is click on OK and the values appear in our data table. This time when we set our parameters and colour the points by originator. We have an additional compound set, the cyan group on the end, which shows you how Maravarok relates to the other compounds. Bearing in mind that Maravarok was the only compound out of this significant research effort to have been approved as a drug for use in man, it's interesting to look at how it relates to its precursors. So the molecular weight of the final compound has increased slightly, but the LLE value has been maintained. The consequences of focusing on a specific ligand deficiency metric will bias the outcome in different ways. For example, Using ligand deficiency alone often leads to smaller compounds, whereas using LLE produces more specific compounds. There is a reference dealing with a detailed discussion of these effects uh, by Schultz et al. given in the PDF version of this tutorial. These plots highlight the differences between these groups of compound. Moravarok lies in between the Merck and the GSK sets. Would these have made equally good drugs? The answer is, of course, that we don't know. Although GSK did go on to launch a different CCR antagonist, a Plaviroc, and there are many other factors that influence whether a compound makes it to the market. Nevertheless, Data Warrior represents a powerful tool for lead optimization and has many other features that I'll hope you'll go on to explore. Thanks for listening. This is the first in a series of tutorials that all, de that all describe free tools for use in computational drug design. I hope you found it useful and that you will go and explore some of the other tutorials on the website.